What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp free tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to create a floor plan from an image inside of SketchUp's free online version. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so in this situation, what we wanna do is we wanna import a reference image and then use it to model out a floor plan inside of SketchUp. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to get our image into our model. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna go up and click on this button right here. So it's a little button that looks like three lines and you're gonna go down and click on the button for insert. And you can see how what the insert option does in the free version is it gives you the ability to insert a SketchUp file, a PNG file, or a JPEG image. So those are the three that you can insert using the free version. There are some other versions that you can bring in if you upgrade, but for the free version, you can use um, basically these three file types. So we're gonna go find our image. We're gonna double click on it. And then you can see how we can either bring this in as an image or as a material. Well, in this situation, we wanna bring it in as an image. So we're just gonna click on image and you can see how what this is gonna do is this is gonna bring this in and you can set this by clicking on a base point and then moving your mouse and clicking again in order to create your image. It doesn't really matter what size you make this right now because we're gonna go in and resize it so that it's to scale. And so the first thing that I usually do when I'm doing this, cause I can't double click into this to edit it. Um, I don't know if that has to do, I'm not really hundred percent sure why that is, but I can't do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on explode. And so when I explode this, what this is going to do is this is going to basically take this and instead of having it be a grouped image, instead it's going to make this basically a face with a texture applied to it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through and we're going to set the scale of our object using the tape measure tool. And I don't necessarily want to change everything else like my base model. So usually I regroup it and then just double click inside of it. Um, and so from there, now you can see how we're in the mode where we're editing this group. Well, what we need to do is we need to set this to scale. And in this situation, what we have is we have some measurements inside of this model or inside of this image that tell us how wide the room is going to be. So for this model, we want the distance and I'm going to click on the tape measure tool, click on tape measure. We want the distance from this point to this point to be 11 feet. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the tape measure tool to rescale our object. So the way that we're going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click between this point right here. So that's basically my wall point. So I've single clicked. I'm going to move my mouse along the red axis until I get to the other wall point right here. So that's basically my interior wall to wall length. And so that gave me my length. Well, without clicking on anything else, what I want to do is I want to type in a value of 11 feet and hit the enter key. So what that's going to do is that's going to ask me if I want to resize the active group or component. And in this situation, the answer is yes. So I'm going to click on OK. So what that's going to do is that's going to resize this model so that now the distance between those two points is 11 feet. So you can see if I come in here and I use my tape measure tool, I can see how the distance between these two points is now very close to 11 feet. So it kind of depends on where I set my base point. But basically what we've done is we've taken this image and we've set it to scale. So now, like for example, this space is supposed to be 12 foot two inches. Well, because we've resized this, if I click between this point, then I move my mouse over here. You can see how this is very close to 12 foot two inches. I wasn't very precise on my base point here, but basically this has been sized properly. Now I will note that this is an approximation because we are using an image as a base file, not like a CAD file or something like that. So this may be off by just a little bit. Um, if you need something to be exact, 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 you're probably not creating it from an image anyway, but you can still use this in order to give you a baseline as long as you're making sure that you're typing in the proper values when you're actually modeling out your walls. But now we've created this image to scale. And what we wanna do is we wanna start modeling. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the dimensions that I have because I don't have a ton of them. Um, some of these spaces like this bathroom don't tell me how wide they are, but I'm gonna start modeling out this space. 
So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to start from a corner and I'm going to model because these are inside dimensions, I'm going to model the inside of my walls. So I'm just going to tap the L key to activate the line tool and then I'm going to mouse over this corner right here and I'm going to find my start point. So and the start point is kind of up to you, but just pick something that's as close as you can get. And basically I want to draw a line that's 11 feet long. And so the way that I can do that is by clicking, moving my mouse in this direction, and then typing in 11 feet and hitting the enter key. So what that did is that created an 11 foot long line inside of my model. So we're gonna do the same thing in this direction. So I'm just gonna draw a line. And in this case, this line is going to be 15 foot one inches long. And so basically what I've done is I've roughed out the corner of this model. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and I'm just gonna model out the perimeter edge of this model. I usually like to start by creating my exterior walls. Note that um, I'm outside of this group. I'm not inside of this group, so I don't have to worry about geometry merging with this face. So because we're outside of this group, that's not really an issue. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna model the rest of this out. And so I'm just gonna draw lines so in this situation, for example, because this wall gets a little bit thicker, I'm just gonna draw a line. It's gonna be about two inches long. And then I'm just gonna come through here and I'm going to model this out to the end because I don't have a complete set of dimensions in here. It's very difficult for me to get this super precise. So I'm going to approximate this as close as I can. So in this situation, for example, this corner looks like we're at about 16 foot two inches. So I'm just gonna type in 16 foot two and hit the enter key. And so one thing that's gonna be really important when you're modeling out walls like this is you want to understand inferencing. So for example, I wanna make sure that I'm drawing this on the red axis, right? You don't wanna draw this slightly off axis because things start getting kind of complicated if you do. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna activate the line tool and click on this corner. Well, in this situation, because this wall runs all the way along, this face, I want to align whatever line I draw from here with this point right here. So you can see how the way that I'm doing that is with one point set, if I move my mouse in this direction and hold the shift key, what that's doing is that's locking the inference to the red axis. So that means I can move my mouse anywhere on, in the model and it'll stay locked on this axis as long as I hold down the shift key. Well, in this situation, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I align with this point so I'm just going to hold the shift key and then click. And what that's done is that's drawn a line that's basically the same length as this line over here. And so one thing you might wanna think about doing is you might wanna think about um, paying attention to the dimensions that you have in here. And in this situation, for example, because I know the width of this space over here, I can be more precise modeling up above as opposed to down here where the spaces aren't really super defined. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to continue modeling down here. And our whole goal on this whole thing is we're basically trying to model out the perimeter here so that this is a closed shape because then we can use the offset tool in order to create our walls. So in this situation, for example, I'm assuming this wall is gonna be four inches. So I'm gonna draw a four inch edge in this direction. And then, because I know this is 12 foot, two inches wide, I'm gonna draw a line. It's gonna be 12 foot, two inches and hit the inner key. And so notice how in this situation that puts us in the middle of the wall over here. That's actually okay. Um, so you can do one of two things here. You can either move the whole thing or you can recognize that you're using this as more of a reference image and be okay with just modeling this this way. So for example, I'm just gonna type in four inches and I'm gonna move a line over here and notice how I'm aligning at this point and I'm off of my image a little bit. That's okay because we're trying to model more precisely to um, these actual dimensions that they have listed in here. So in this situation, for example, this wall is gonna be 11 foot long. So I'm just gonna draw a line that's 11 feet, hit the enter key. And then we're just gonna draw a line all the way down. We're gonna hold the shift key and we're gonna align it with this line right here. 
So then we can come in here and we can continue modeling these, just getting close because we don't have the dimensions of all of these spaces. But in this situation, I can do like an eight foot line here and basically just try to align with all of this the best I can. And so what I've done is I've come in here and I've modeled out basically a face that's on top of my image. And the reason that this is flashing is you're getting what's known as Z fighting. Basically what Z fighting is, is when you have a grouped face like this one and then another face over here, they're both occupying the same space inside of SketchUp and the engine doesn't know which one to show, which is why it's flashing. But just know that you have a group with an image that I could right click and hide. And then I have another object in here that's basically my walls that's filled in as well. So just know that those are both in here um, and it's okay that it's flashing because at the end of the day we're probably going to hide this image anyway. But now what we have is we have this whole perimeter roughed out. Well I can offset this out by selecting the face and tapping the F key. So when I tap the F key what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to offset the edges of this face by a fixed dimension. So notice how by single clicking with that tool active, I can offset these walls outward. Well, in this situation, I'm assuming that my walls are gonna have a thickness of four inches. So I'm just gonna type in a value of four and hit the enter key. And so what that's done is all around this building that's created a face um, using a wall that's four inches wide. You may need to clean up a little bit of this, like this wall, for example, is a little bit thicker because it's a plumbing wall. So I'm just going to move this over so that this edge aligns right here. But basically what we have in here is we now have a wall that we can extrude up. So if I tap the P key to activate the push pull tool, you can see I could push pull this wall up and down using this tool. And so for now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete out this face in the middle and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna extrude my walls up. One thing you might wanna think about doing while you're doing this is you might want to think about adding some edges in here where your windows are going to go. So basically what I'm gonna do is if I delete out this face, right, and look at this image, you can see I have a window right here, I have a balcony door right here, and I have a window right here. And so what I'm gonna do is real quick, I'm just gonna draw lines that are gonna delineate where that window goes inside of my wall. So I'm assuming this window is going to be six feet. And notice how this is coming in here and this is healing the faces. That's okay. You can just delete them out as you go. Notice how every time you draw an edge in here, it's gonna try to heal the faces in. That's perfectly fine. That's perfectly normal. And it's just easy for you to delete them out and get them back. All right, so I'm gonna delete out that central face again. And so basically what we have in here now is we have our walls that are ready to be extruded. So you can take these walls and you can extrude them up. One thing you might wanna think about is triple clicking on them to select them all, right clicking and reversing the faces. So when you reverse the faces, that means the front face is gonna be showing outward rather than the back face. And so now we're gonna extrude these walls up by tapping the P key, single clicking on them, and then typing in a value of 10 feet and hitting the enter key. Notice how when I did this, um, I only got the uninterrupted faces, right? Because you can only extrude one face at a time inside of SketchUp. And so for now, all we have to do is just continue with this tool active and just double click. And so double clicking is basically going to extrude whatever object you double click on by whatever the last measurement was that you extruded by. So you can see how in this situation, that means I can go through and just double click on these really quickly in order to extrude them all up to 10 feet. And so the reason I put these lines in here is because I wanted to know where the windows go. Um, we don't necessarily have to model out those openings right now, but I know exactly where the width of the windows are and the doors because I've created those edges and extruded these in here like this. So now, like for example, if we wanted to create a door opening right here, I could draw a line up seven feet I could draw a line across right here and then I could just activate the push pull tool and single click on this face and then move my mouse until this turns this kind of like darker color. Um, alternatively, you can also move your mouse over the back side of one of the vertices over here and then click. And basically what this is gonna do, what this should do, is this should cut an opening in here. This one left 
these faces. So you can just erase out this edge and erase out this face. But notice how we're able to create these openings in these walls really easily. So we'll come back and do that maybe a little bit later. But now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna continue this. So I'm gonna continue by modeling my interior walls. A lot of the time what I like to do is I like to keep my exterior walls grouped separately from my interior walls. You don't have to do this, but I think I'm going to. So I'm just gonna triple click on all of my walls and right click on them and make them a group. And so making them a group is basically gonna make it so that their geometry isn't intersecting with everything else in the model. So it's one way of keeping everything organized. And so now we can just come into our model and just continue modeling everything out. So in this situation, for example, um, I could just come in here and I could just draw a line all the way across like this in order to create my interior wall right here. And then I could draw another line across here like this, and then I can just draw a rectangle over top of them in order to create a face. And then you can come back in and do the same thing we did before, where we can just model out these doors based on their opening size. So this one, for example, would have a width of three feet. So I would split this up based on where the doors are. And we're just gonna come in here and model out the rest of the walls the same way we modeled out our original walls. And so I'm going to speed this portion up because I feel like you've probably got a pretty good idea at this point of how we're doing this. We're basically modeling out our walls, blocking out our openings, and then extruding everything to a full height. So then, once I have my walls in here, I can just do the same thing where I can push-pull one of them up to this height, and then just go through and double-click on the rest of them with this tool active. All right, and one more thing before I wrap up. So what I'm gonna do in this situation is I'm just gonna go through and I'm also going to cut these door openings. We're just creating the rough openings for right now. We'll come back maybe in the next video and talk a little bit more about how to, about how to actually model out your doors and frames. But for the moment, let's just rough out these openings using the push-pull tool. So you can see how we're basically just extruding this, or we're drawing the opening, and then we're just extruding the opening through our wall. Then you can also come in here and erase out these extra edges after you're done with this because you don't really need them in here anymore. So just to clean everything up, you can use the erase tool. So just tap the E key to activate that. Then just click and drag across these edges in order to clean this up. And then final thing is I'm gonna triple click on this wall in order to select everything. And I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna put this all in a group. So when this is grouped, again, you don't have to worry about the geometry merging with everything else and having everything get really complicated. So that's where I'm going to end this video. In the next video, we can go through and we can start talking about how to create our doors and windows inside of SketchUp Free. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you like this video? Did you find it helpful? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.